this is it. This is where I suppose we And as a black... Why we as Americans have to reconnect with our roots. The depth of suffering and the height of joy that these songs can articulate. One way that we can explain the mother of God is in song. My mother. So how did we get where we are today? A discernible shift in the place Fighting of Africa. what is most important in our lives. Light in my darkness. The Holy Spirit is able to. So if you want to participate in the movement, you've got to prepare yourself. for inviting me and um, giving me a platform to uh, do a little presentation uh, and I want to thank uh, Mother Catherine for inviting me and for a uh, wonderful experience in the liturgy today. It was, it was something that I will never forget. I, I am a writer and director of a film called Man of God about uh, Saint Thank you, about St. Antarius of Agina. Um, and I just want to say before the video uh, goes on that actually I, I never thought of making a film about a saint. I always wanted to, as, as a writer and director and, uh, I, and a believer, I wanted to make films that would help people, uh, that would, you know, real stories that would hopefully uh, show people there is light at the end of the tunnel. But until I, I read about St. Nectarius in 2012, I never thought of making a film about a saint. And with the help of St. Nectarius, um, it happened. I, I always say he is my uh, main producer. Uh, it wouldn't have happened otherwise. So thank God for everything. I want to thank God and Mother of God for preserving me through all the difficulties that I had to go through. And I hope uh, that I will still have a blessing to do another film, which I'm inspired to do about the great saint, St. Saint Moses the Black. So I, um, God willing, please keep me in your prayers. Um, I, I, I'm slightly cowardly to go again through what I had to go through with the first one. So, but please, uh, if, you, if you have a three minutes, just I will show the video and then I will say a few more words. Thank you. A uh, little taste, hopefully, of if God willing, if uh, I'm meant to do this, uh, hopefully I'll, um, I'll be able to do another film to the glory of God and salvation of, of, of man. Uh, uh, every, every man possesses an inclination in his heart to do good and evil. What exactly is in man's heart is not always reflective of his outward appearance. Deeds do speak louder than words, but even that is not always a true assessment. A man's heart is a mystery and can only be known to the one who knows the hearts of men. I often experience peace and comfort in the company of those who were deemed bad, and likewise I felt the presence of discomfort and experienced terrible things around some who seem to do good. Sometimes the best of hearts are living destructive lives simply because they don't know better and they do not see and believe that there is a way out. There are many women and men with great potential to do God's work that are currently living destructive lives. I know that because as an artist living in Los Angeles, for many years, I often hung, our, hung around people like that. However, interestingly enough, when I spoke to them about Jesus, even if they had no faith, they listened intently. They wanted to hear about him. On the other hand, when I hung around some people that seemed to have it all figured out, they were doing very well in this world, especially in the company of learned intellectuals. Mentioning the name of Jesus was not even an option. I started to go to church on a regular basis in the year of 2000. I was a single mom back then. It was then that I had my first communion and holy, uh, and holy communion and confession. And after that, I embarked on the most important journey of my life, uh, which is a journey for the battle for my soul. 
I struggled to get on the right path. After many ups and downs, many difficulties, uh, my life gradually became better. I got married in 2009. <clears throat> I had my second son in 2011. And now that I was doing what seems to be the right thing, it was precisely then I remember a moment and a place where and when it happened that the grace left me. The grace that was there all those years when I did not know better, during the years when I fought intensely to get on the right path. But now it was gone. It is one thing to have faith, which is a gift, by the way, and go through difficulties, but it's another thing to go through suffering when the grace leaves you. I don't wish that on my worst enemy. Some say that God gives us grace and then pulls it away so that we can yearn for him even more. I'm not certain that in my case it was such a thing. I'm almost positive that my heart had hardened to during, due to certain conditions that I was exposed to and I actually became worse. I caved in, I became more cowardly and less honest. I wanted to please the Lord, but he showed me that the outworldly gymnastics do not mean much. It is the state of the heart that he cares about. Things have shifted since then, I hope for the better. So I think there is a still hope for me. I often think of this, and sometimes I ask myself, who is good? What does good really mean? After all, Jesus said, uh, why are you calling me good? No one is good <clears throat> except God. Okay, so as I said, I'm not a theologian, so I'm not going to go through any theological discussions. But there are things that I do know, the things that I have seen and experienced. Uh, do you know who loves Jesus the most and knows for sure that he is the Lord? A great sinner who repented. Without knowing how bad we actually are, we cannot even begin to repent and start to get close to God. Uh, there are some people out there that know how bad they are. People that are not in denial about that whatsoever. People that are ready and willing to hear about Jesus and surrender to him completely. For they know without shadow of a doubt that without him they cannot do one thing good. St. Moses the Black was one of them. He knew how bad he was. There was nothing lukewarm about him. Once he realized that God existed, that was it for him. The repentance was the only thing until the end. And not only that, he realized that he was not a gangster. There is no such a thing. He was a slave to demons. So he decided to declare war on them. And he was given a victory by God. When he said those words, who takes the sword must die by the sword, and accepted martyr's death, that was his victory. He died as a martyr. It is not easy to face death. I've done it quite a few times, especially with my arrhythmia. I know what it is. Uh, but to die willingly a violent death, that's a different level. That's a bravery. And I stand in all for people that can do that. Uh, my father often spoke about our great ancestors who fought to liberate Montenegro and Serbia for the Turkish, or the Turkish occupation. And there was one of them in particular that learned how to read and write at his late 60s. And he wrote books and he said, the only reason I, I, I did that is not because I wanted to become famous but I saw so many brave women and men that were going into the most painful and uh, horrific deaths with joy for God and, and for those that they loved. And I wanted to record what they did. So maybe this crazy Serbian woman here has some connection with Moses the Black through, that, uh, through those genes that um, are there to fight for freedom 
and to accept. Uh, we have in our Serbian church in, uh, in Chicago, I saw there was a, right on the church there's a sign, uh, freedom or death. So that's, that's uh, something that's familiar to us, to my people. Uh, so I hope to make a film that will give hope and courage to people to abandon a life of sin, firmly believing that God forgives those who truly repent and welcomes them to eternal life. For no life is lost or meaningless in the eyes of God. Uh, if I get the chance to make this film, there be, might be some heads turning because I like to make things that are very honest and meaningful and to glory of, to God and because I truly believe and firmly believe that if a violent gangster from the fourth century of Egypt can become a saint, so can a gangster from Chicago. Thank you very much.